you little pink puffball, have you heard of Hunter? Pollo. No, Hunter. Pollo. Um, I think I think there might be a language barrier oh. here. Yep. It's a new app, hot off the press, where we pay you to hunt and kill monsters. Pollo. Pollo. You you sound po- you sound excited now. So Poyo. you you want to participate? Pollo. Yeah. Okay, Poy- we'll sign you up right now. Here, just just type in your information. Po- po- Poyo. Oh uh, God. Okay. Poyo. You know what? Screw this. A hunter and a pink puffball. Enjoy three play with us. Poyo. Hello, hello, welcome to Anabel Console, your weekly podcast where we make bad Kirby impressions. My name is Chris, and with me is my beautiful co-host and wife, Karen. And... Puh, puh, puh. I didn't think I was ever going to get through pink puffball. Yeah, we... Karen, yeah, that's me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you re-rec- re-recorded that what? Like five Four times? times? <laughs> Just trying to get pink I couldn't puff stop ball. laughing. I kept saying pink buff buff ball. <laughs> A pink buff ball. In another reality, Kirby is a pink buff ball, but not in this one. He's pretty buff. He's a. He's strong. He's a. Pink he's strong. Little marshmallow. He's strong. He is kind of strong. Um, there's this thing on YouTube called Death Battle where they take characters from different properties and make them fight to the death. And uh, they have done Kirby, I think, one or two times. And the list of achievements that Kirby has done throughout the games and the anime show. Kind of ridiculous. There's an anime for Kirby? Yeah. Really? It's yeah. terrible. Is that weird channel that you watch all the time where they make people fight? Yeah. From different universes? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Death Battle. You've, yeah. You've watched it before with me, right? Yeah, they have annoying voices like all the people you watch on YouTube. You just hate everything <laughs> that I love. Even yourself, because you know that I love you too. Yep. I hate myself. Yeah. But you know what you don't hate? Mm, sushi. That and the food adventure we've had this week. Oh my god, it's been a lot. To the point point where you wanted to throw up earlier. I I wanted to die. (laughs) We had amazing lunch from the place that we're going to review today, and then she was complaining that she was hungry, so I said, all right, just go get dinner. And she brought so much sushi. I mean, you're the one who asked for so much sushi. I didn't know it was going to be that much. Because mm-hmm. uh, well, you know now, yeah, I, I, I got. And the thing is that the one that was really big, it was a fucking platter. You ordered a platter. It was. You should have known that there was a lot of sushi on that. It was six dollars. Oh, that thing was yes. only six dollars. Yes, that, that was, was a fuck ton of sushi. I know. It was like a lot. The Godzilla <laughs> roll uh, was deep more, fried, so that made it more yeah. heavy. So, and it was like eight dollars, and it had like six pieces, and this one had like. What, 15 six pieces. A piece, so that's 12 plus 6, 18 pieces of sushi. And it was $6. I mean, what the hell? In what universe does that make sense? So, of course, I wanted to die after eating it. I was, I'm still full. So, and we have leftovers sitting in the fridge. And we have leftovers for tomorrow. We have leftovers from lunch and from dinner. Yep. Look at us. We're winning. That's, that's pretty good. But, uh, yeah, uh, we are going to, we're just uh, planning on stocking up on a lot of garbage places. Uh, to Gorbage, and uh, we're going to spread them out throughout the next couple of weeks because, unfortunately, we have to do a little dietary change. A little? <laughs> so Gorbage mm, might get weird in a couple yeah. of weeks from now, but until you, You'd then, rather us live and make good podcast material, right, uh, I'd than rather, die. I'd rather die. I'm talking to the listeners, oh, not you. Oh. Listener, <laughs> you, you would rather I die, right? No! <laughs> We're going to review rabbit food for you from now on. Oh, God, please, no. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, during this adventure, I did get a little bit weird this weekend with uh, our go-to place. Oh, my God. Our poor waitress was, like, about to have a heart attack she could when not we told it. her that he was going to order something different than the usual. So we go every Friday to be at Thai Cafe, which we reviewed on our first Very episode. Very first episode. Best a, place in Orlando. Amazing The food, best place. Amazing game. Amazing service. I don't remember the food, but the episode was terrible. Not not the food, the, the book. Oh, it was um, um, a rogue of... No, uh, yeah, a rogue. 
A Rogue of One's Own? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was one of my historical romances because we talked about dick a lot. Right, right. Yeah, because we talked that, about the squirrel sex toys. The squirrel sex toys that yeah. everybody seems to love. And I don't know why. I don't know why people like come to listen to the podcast and they go right to episode one. I'm like, no, you need to listen to the later stuff first. Yes. And then work your way backwards. Yeah. So for some reason you found this episode, just listen to everything. What? We declared that it was what? Like episode 12 or 13? The one with Dracula's son in the title? I think so. From that one onwards, because the rest of the episodes before that are I'd like to say we got better like episode five. But we didn't. We actually got. We're better still pretty bad after episode three. But it's it's been a slow. I wasn't very comfortable. <laughs> a slow, slow getting better. And I still get uncomfortable terrible. at times. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Me too. I get uncomfortable <laughs> at myself. Anyways, so I had roast duck at Viet Thai Cafe and curry, red curry with yeah, because it comes with your choice of either ginger sauce or Penang or red curry or something else and. Um, when we went last week with Crystal and her boyfriend, he got... That's the, his sister. Yeah. He got the yellow curry and it looked really good and he said it was good. But was we're it? not close enough to ask him to let us yeah. try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Watch I, them listen to this episode. You could have tried my curry, man. <laughs> he probably, he's probably going to say that. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I had the roast duck. That duck... Um, I don't want to say it was roasted because it really just felt like it was fried, but it was perfect. The it, Oh, my God. The fat was perfect. The meat was perfect. The s- crunchy skin was perfect. It was very crunchy. I heard it crunching in your mouth. <laughs> and and you would, I would dip it in the curry. Wow. That, that whole... Oh, it was so perfect. Our poor waitress looked like she was about to have a heart attack when you finished ordering. And I said, same for me. And she looked at me like, what? And I was like, no, no. (laughs) My usual same for me. Not that. No. No, because you don't like duck that way. And um, that curry is a curry that I've never had before. And it would take me a while to get used to that unique flavor. Yeah, because you're used to the (laughs) Japanese curry. It wasn't bad, but I wouldn't order it for myself. Because Japanese curry doesn't have usually coconut milk in it. This one does. And Japanese curry is... Yeah. But... Japanese curry is comfort food. It's like so it's was like this. a roast. This, this really felt like comfort food. It, was, it d- didn't have any. You know meat what we should it. be eating this weekend on our food adventure? What that curry? Yes. What the fuck are we doing? Well, the the adventure we over. fucked up. Yeah, we did. But the adventure we'll over. eat some in like two months. Yeah, yeah. We'll as we'll... our cheat for September or something. I don't know. <laughs> For, for We're already Patreon. planning out August cheat dinner, and then we've got September cheat dinner. For in Patreon October, we'll chosen <laughs> dinner, we'll, uh, have we'll, curry. we'll go have curry, Japanese oh, curry God. somewhere. Uh, but it was amazing. Uh, the curry had peppers, and it had a lot of bamboo shoots. And uh, was, was it bamboo shoots? You said Anyways. it was bamboo shoots. I don't know. I didn't need it. It was bamboo. Definitely it was bamboo. Um, but... The thing is that the peppers were so fresh and so good with that curry. And then the bamboo shoots, the longer they sat in it, the more they absorbed the bamboo. And they still kind of had a little bit of a snap. So you bite into it, get that nice little snap from the bamboo. And then just like delicious bamboo flavored curry. Our poor waitress came back to the table like 12 times just to make sure he actually liked it. Because, you know... Never order anything different. It's been like two years that we've been going there every Friday, and I order the same thing for the every last two single years. time. And I always say I'm gonna get the du- roasted duck with the curry. No, he never time. does. And then this time I said, you know what? We're not gonna be here for a while, so might as well. I hope she remembers who we are next time we go, which will probably be in like two weeks. <laughs> so make sure you exercise a lot. Okay. And I'm gonna exercise a lot so okay. that we can afford it in two weeks. <laughs> um, oh boy. But yeah, th- during this fun adventure, we went... Where the hell did we go yesterday? We went to Lakeland, we went to St. Pete, and we went to Clearwater. And... All Florida, obviously. So it's a, a long drive between Yeah, like stops. two hours. So at one point, we decided to put music on. And we did that thing where I put a song and then you put a song. Tell me what atrocity you put on that made me so mad. I put on this really, really cool playlist that I found on TikTok. Something... So Smart strawberries. I don't even remember what it's called, but um, there's this really cool cover 
of Blue by Eiffel 65. It's terrible. It is awesome. It's really like techno-y, not techno. I don't know what it is. It's garbage. That's that's why you can't tell what wonderful. it is because it's terrible. And I was so mad at that cover for the song that I decided to put on a real Eiffel 65 song. And that song is called My Console. Because this group, with their one-hit wonder, on their first album, decided to make a song about the PlayStation. And Carradine couldn't believe it until she heard the words. P-L-A-Y-S-T-A-T-I-O-N. Those are letters, not words. <laughs> but yes. And uh, when you heard Metal Gear Solid, you were like, what? And then Resident Evil, you were like, water? <laughs> so you just kept going, what? Every time they would. And I'm like, why is it spelled with two L's? Why? C O N S O L. So that's a mistake on. Um, Was it really a mistake? It's a mistake on Spotify's part. Are you serious? Yeah, look, it's right here. It's my console. Are and you that's fucking a, kidding me? That's how you spell console. Yeah, with one L. Why did, why did Spotify spell it with two? I don't know. They what the heck? Uh, maybe the, the uploader is the one that fucked up the spelling. And, yeah. But yeah, no, they, they have, they mentioned a bunch of games and all of these games I played. And oh my God, it's Tekken 3. Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, Gran Turismo, Mega Boost, Bloody Roar, X Files, Odd World, Ridge Racer. I love it. I love that song so much. You hate it because it's talking about PlayStation and you hate everything. It I love. also just wasn't a good song. No, it's a really good song. You're, you're, you're just I hate not, everything you love. You're just not, no. You're I love just Luna. not used to it. You're just not used to good music. Oh my God. Because you like pop. But you know who doesn't like pop? Our Patreon supporters. Hopefully. And our friend Burger Champ. Oh, yeah. How, do you really know what his music tastes are? Rock. Do you like Nickelback Burger Champ? He probably does. I don't know. He, he's, <laughs> he's a very interesting individual. He's a really cool person. But uh, he did send us an email. Uh, he says, after the a novel console slash remember the game crossover, I got to thinking. What favorite book and game franchises would you like to see crossover? In food, build your own perfect fast food combo using only one item from each restaurant. Must include sandwich or entree dish, two sides, beverage, and a dessert option. Read, play, and eat on Burger Champ. That's really fucking hard. You want to? No, I don't want to start. You start. No? Okay, I'll start. So I'm going to go the cheap way. and I am We're going... starting with the food? No, I'm going oh. with the book and game crossover. Oh. So I'm going to be really cheap here, and because I don't read many books, I am going to choose the uh, written version or the screenplays or... That's um, cheating! The novelization of the Star Wars Raptor. movies. Oh. Of the Star Wars movies, and I'm going to mix them with Hyrule Warriors. Because I think... Not or Dynasty Wars or whatever, because I think that would be awesome playing as Luke Skywalker or fucking any of the Jedi's and just killing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stormtroopers. Don't you think that would be cool? No, I just came up with with what I think is like the most epic crossover ever, and I just came up with it on the fly. What? Like it literally just popped into my mind. I was like, "What if what are the video games that I've actually played?" And I thought of the one video game that i have actually played all the way through journey yes with scythe because i think okay. about the cape Explain and like the me. capes that the scythes wear and i just imagine the scythes wandering the desert trying to avoid killing people i don't know are they reapers is that what they're called i spent too long i gotta read the second fucking book i've forgotten too much already yeah but basically, yeah. I think it would be very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. <laughs> from, from what you've described and from what little I've seen of Journey, I think that could work. You've never played Journey? No. It's so pretty. I have it. It's so it. pretty. Um, I, do, I would watch you play it. I do have a bonus, though. What? So this one, again, um, I'm cheaping out. Oh. So I'm going to go X-Men Comics and Final Fantasy Tactics. Because you would have a tactical RPG game, or maybe Fire Emblem. And uh, each character from the X-Men, they all have their own special unique abilities that you would be able to use in combat. Kelsey Grammer! In combat. Kelsey Grammer beast. would be a skin. What? He would be a skin <laughs> for the Beast character. And it wouldn't be him as Beast, it would be him as Frasier. Oh my god! It would be great. Beast is basically Frasier. 
Yeah, except blue. Oh. Anyway, now our fast food conundrum. So I I think I have mine. Um, I'm gonna do the Bacon King from Burger King with uh, the uh, nacho fries from Taco Bell and the mashed potatoes from Church's Chicken. For a beverage, a Coke from McDonald's, and for dessert, a Captain Jack's Bay Treasure from... Um, it's not fast food, though. It, it can be from anywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I did choose mostly fast food, so yeah. I deserve kind of a restaurant pick. Okay. So, so Captain well, Jack's Bay Treasure is from Miller Sale House. Yeah. So my entree would be a well-done, but not burnt... Cheese quesadilla from Taco Bell with extra cheese and extra creamy jalapeno sauce because that is the hill I will die on. For my sides, this is really hard. <laughs> you can't okay. choose the nacho fries because you I already went to Taco Bell. The waffle fries from the Satan place. And we don't speak of it anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about if I'm talking about waffle fries. We planned don't you? On- we planned on uh, <laughs> garbaging it, but we threw those pictures out because oh, they're terrible. Didn't we garbage it already? No. Are you sure we didn't? I'm sure. We had them in the chicken sandwich episode, though. Right, but we mm-hmm. didn't talk about anything else. And actually, they were the uh, second to worst. I swear we garbaged them. No. Mm-hmm. No, they were the second to worst chicken sandwich, only losing to McDonald's. Oh, the that only... says a lot. Yeah. So. Hold on, I need to think about my second side here. Oh, God. Urgh. Queso from Moe's. A bowl of queso. I'll allow it. <laughs> and a cup of free salsa because it's free, so it, it counts towards my side. <clears throat> okay, now my dessert. No, I drink. A large sweet tea from McDonald's, as long as it's done right. As okay. long as it's done right. All right. And my dessert. Oh God. Oh, it does. It can be from just a dessert place, right? Yeah. The cappuccino crunch ice cream from the Twisty Treat on I Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, Hershey's brand <laughs> cappuccino crunch ice cream. That's a good. That's a good one. That's because that's the one. only Twisty Treat that carries Hershey's ice cream. Yeah, Hershey's ice cream is so fucking hard to find. The yeah. the um the gallon ice like the the soft serve ice. It's not soft serve. No, it's um, it's pre made. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, like, you can't even buy it at the store because no. they only sell to like franchises. Businesses. Yeah, they they won't sell. You can contact them and say, "Hey, can I get a tub?" They won't sell it to you because you are not a business, and you can't just search like what places carry Hershey's ice cream because he found one this little Mexican supermarket down the road. But they only carry like the bars, like the strawberry, the strawberry shortcake bars, stuff like that. That's Hershey's brand. Yeah. But they don't have legit Hershey's cartons, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating. It is very annoying. But there's like a creamery in West Orlando that sells it. Just yeah. Yeah, it's very annoying. So uh, I think that's it for the intro. Wow, that was almost twenty minutes. Jesus, we talked a lot of shit. Yeah, we did. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get into book talk. Wow, it's been so long since I've done this that I don't even like remember what I'm supposed to do. But this week's book is a graphic novel ARC, Advanced Reader's Copy, that I received from Fierce Reads. Thank you, Fierce Reads! It is Bubble by Jordan Morris, Sarah Morgan, and Tony Cliff. I think Tony Cliff is the illustrator. And it publishes tomorrow, if you're listening on the day we published the episode. So the 12th. it's releasing so it's, on the 13th. Yes, July 13th, 2021 by 1st, 2nd. So Chris and I actually both read this one, and as soon as I started reading it, I knew it would be something that he would love to, and I'm just going to read you guys the quick, like, description. Um, So basically, it's a hilarious monster-hunting fantasy romp of a graphic novel with a satirical take on hipster culture and the gig economy based on the smash hit podcast by the same name, Bubble. 
It's just as amazing as it sounds, says the description. We only listened to like two seconds <laughs> of the first episode. There are only eight episodes and they're from 2018. So um, the, the, wait, wait. Those two seconds, they were literally the first two panels. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway. It's like a it's a it's a dramatic reenactment in podcast form, sort of. A dramatic audio. So kind of like a thing. table reading. Yeah, but, of the graphic novel. Yeah, kind of like those graphic audios. So yeah. a movie in your mind. Yeah, but podcast form, Matt. Yeah. Um, so the Bubble Podcast has been downloaded millions of times, and it's currently in development as a feature animated film with Seth Rogen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it follows Morgan. That was her name, right? Morgan, yeah. Morgan, um, she is a monster hunter who's from the outside, which is called the Brush. Yeah. So basically, think of it as like Earth, but monster infested. And she was taken as a child to live in the city that's in a bubble, basically, to keep all the monsters out and the Brush people. But some monsters get in, and you got to go kill them. And they come up with this app called Hunter, H U N T R. Where basically you can like be an Uber driver monster killer. <laughs> it's the gig, the side gig, your side hustle. Like, first, several of the first panels are like a mom doing yoga. Hunter allows me to work when the kids are going to bed, things like that. It keeps me young. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like the, it's so funny. Helps me support my Funko addiction. Because it, it like pokes fun at all the marketing shit that all these stupid gig economy company mm -hmm. do. Like, oh, well, I'm on my way to get drunk with my buddy. I can make money for being yes. on the way there. But then it's, it's even funnier because they have some real gig jobs in the graphic novel like, like one of the guys works for postmates yeah um there's isn't there tinder too i think so and one of the guys is a social media influencer but he's not making enough money so he's doing hunter on the, on side. the side yeah um but yeah it's super fun there's lots of pop culture stuff but it's also sci-fi and these monsters are kind of like really fucking scary and then they're also like zombies and we don't want to give too many things away because, like I said, it publishes tomorrow. It's so good. But it is so fucking good. And, like, it spoke to my soul because the main character is addicted to Frasier and they pick on her a lot for, like, watching it over and over. And that is our life. And uh, I, I found <laughs> it funny that um, she, there was a flashback scene where she was listening to her iPod or something and she was listening to... A band in preppy sweaters that complain about their life. And I was like, oh, my God, they're making fun of Weezer. Mm -hmm. Fuck Weezer. I <laughs> hate Weezer so much. We both hate Weezer a whole hell of a lot. I would rather, much rather hell. listen to 311, which they also, they also poke, poke fun, fun of. of. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Because one of the characters is in love with 311. I would rather listen to 311 than Weezer anytime. But it's super cool. So, like, Morgan has this roommate, Annie. She also has a, an ex-boyfriend, Van. They meet their Postmates delivery guy, Mitch, a monster. We, we used to date somewhat Annie. Yeah, sort of-ish. I, I wanted to hate Mitch so much, but... But Mitch is awesome. I, 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 I ended up falling in love with him. I was like, this guy is so, <laughs> so, so great. It's like Phil Dumphy, but Monster Honey. Yeah. Like I, a young I, Phil. I loved him. He was great. But yeah, basically, just to set it up for you, Mitch is like delivering their food and an imp, a monster shows up and he gets bitten and he basically gets like this cosmic power to fight the monsters. <laughs> so At one point they were hunting a monster and he saw a cat and he got so excited about the cat that he blew up the monster <laughs> that they were hunting. <laughs> Oh, gosh, but it's such a good time, and it really, like, so well pokes fun of all of the things that Wrong we... with the gig economy. Yeah. Like, there was that one scene where they gave him three stars, and she went back to yes. confront the guy, and I was like, God, and he's I like, wish three I stars is average. I mean, it's, it's nothing to complain about. Like, I wish I could have gone back and done that with some customers. Right? Like, the one-star people? Like, the what one the fuck, dude? People? You were just having a bad day? Decided taking out on me? What the hell? Exactly. I have 405 star reviews and three 
One star reviews. I think that says a lot about those three I've, fucking people. I'm not bitter. I've done 3,000 <laughs> trips. And Have I you only, really? I was close. I was, what the hell? Uh, 2,800 something. Wow. Yeah. and, and I just I hit had, 400. I had... I have one or two four stars. I have two. Zero no three threes. stars. No two stars. Do you have any two stars? No. Two one stars. I have three. How the fuck do I have more one star reviews than you do? People are You're a cats. lot more of an asshole than I am. Yeah. You, I bet, I don't even know. What the fuck? What the yeah. fuck? So, Says the man who's watching a podcast stream. While he was driving. <laughs> it wasn't a podcast. I never do anything I'm not supposed to while driving. I even suffer through the radio while I'm driving people in the car. Stream. It was a charity oh, God. that was being transmitted through Twitch. And I only had my earbud in and I was listening to it. After these last couple of weeks, I think we really need to sit down and just have an Uber story explosion episode. That like was... boyfriends calling my cell phone after midnight because I was stupid and let oh, the passenger Jesus borrow Christ. my no. phone. <laughs> um, I, I should have. Uh, what sh- should we do it for Patreon or just? We could, yeah. Guess We'd have not... to really advertise it though, because I feel like that would be our Patreon supporters really are gonna fun. love it. But... Yeah, yeah. Um, our parents might have heart attacks listening to it. My favorite story. My mom's still... like, please don't do that anymore. Every time I tell her something that happens. My favorite story is still gonna be the one about the gay guys in EDC. I had like I don't I don't know. Don't tell it. Don't, I don't tell know it. We're gonna save it for Patreon. In the guy's face when he did what he did. So if you wanted to find out what he did, which I probably told the story before <laughs> on the podcast, just sign up. We'll, for we'll our have Patreon. them all in one place. We'll have them all in one place. God, I need to figure out all the stories. I get to tell about the homeless mom. So many things. Anyways, going back to bubble. Going back to Bubble. What else do you got from Bubble? So back to Bubble. um, I really, really liked the art style. I loved how colorful it is. I know I've talked about, like, complaining about graphic novels being in black and white before. But this is full color, really vibrant, and it is beautiful. It is so detailed. I, like, the things that stick out the most, there's a ton of pinks, like bright pinks and bright greens. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. No, no. I'm, I love yeah, the color. I, I, I love about. it. it. It was, after reading so much manga, because it's pretty it's much, refreshing, it's right? pretty much the only thing I read, because I don't have a good comic book app where I don't have to pay for the comics. Well, you need to download my Hoopla um, app on your phone. I am not going to do the joke. We've done it way too much. Hoopla! Oh, my God. Anyways, um... I couldn't resist. I needed to get it out. It was going to eat at me the rest of the night. Um, after reading so much manga, uh, I, I found it very enjoyable to watch, to read a, a comic book or a graphic novel or whatever you want to call it. Um, it. It did give me a lot of um, sex criminals vibes with the color, colorfulness. The art kind of gave me sex criminal vibes too. Like the, I feel like the characters had similar... Looks like, sort the, of the way that they did the facial expressions was very, very sex criminals. Yeah. So I, I really think you should read sex criminals. Do you know the sex once criminals in, authors? N- I think it's one of them's the last name is Zar- Zdarsky with a Z. I don't remember who the other one is. Uh but now that it's further it was way further along because I read this like five Matt six Fraction years ago. and Chip Zdarsky. Chips yeah, those those so yeah um i after the first few chapters after the bank robbery and sex criminals that's when it gets really good so i need um, to try to go back to it it's yeah been you, too you long. Should, i'm gonna have to reread it. it it's really worth it like saga was worth it and you've oh. ruined my whole fucking life with that shit listen ruined my saga, life saga took me a while and to then get i into it, and ruined then I marla's off. life and you didn't even have your life ruined because you didn't finish fucking reading it. I dropped off. Oh, God. I got to the point where I got current, and then I was like, when's the next one coming out? Oh, in a few weeks, and I forgot completely. I hate you. But yeah, it, it was really, really refreshing to see like uh, a graphic novel with so much color. It, it's really fun. Um, it's and there really are a couple fun, like full two-page panels. Um, they yeah. were pretty cool. I yeah. liked. I, I we were given a digital, or I was given a digital copy via Bookstagram, but we're using it for a podcast and Bookstagram. Um, like they they gave us a digital copy, but it's laid out in like I don't know how to explain this. 
You're like, reading you're uh, reading both panel book. both pages like at once. Yeah. yeah. Um so that was cool. I like seeing full two page panels. Yeah. Um the uh one thing that I did like is that it was kind of that a, you didn't like? That I did like. Oh. Is that the story started and it had a resolution at the end of the book. But then I left it open for another story to continue. I need it to continue. With the part that it got to where it ended, I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, the the conflict got resolved somewhat, and they don't even know about what's going to come. So I I think it was perfectly fine. I wouldn't need another um, chapter if they decided that that was the end of the story. But if there is another chapter, I'll gladly take it because it was really good. I hope so. As long as they give it to me in the same format, once it's completely done, then I'll take it. If not, I don't care. I'm excited because um, Fierce Reads asked if anybody wanted finished physical copies once it was ready, and I signed up for it, so I hope I got chosen because I love it so much. What What are the names? Finished? What? A finished copy. No, no, no. The, oh, the company? Fierce Reads. Fierce Reads. Yes. We want a finished copy. Please, Fierce Reads, please. We are sending you this via email. So please And we'll promote listen. the movie when it's ready. Yes, even yeah. though we have one listener and he's not listening anymore <laughs> because he moved to Orlando and now he doesn't commute to work. <laughs> so we have zero listeners every oh week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're terrible. No, we have uh, France listening. France is still listening. There's there's a couple of new places listening. Um, Pretty random. Yeah, and Dave is listening again, so that's that's pretty great. Uh, but yeah, okay, so you want to wrap it up with Bubble, or do you have anything else you want to say? I loved it. Highly recommend it. If you want to pop into your local bookstore, if it's not closing like ours is, um, tomorrow, and grab yourself a copy, highly recommend. Highly. Highly, highly, highly. recommend. It is it's very good. Very, very so good. So awesome. It's so funny. It is it's very so funny. It's so fucking funny. It it's very, hilarious. Very funny. I love it. Um... It's the best of all the worlds. Yes. Thrown into one. And Keridin, Keridin is going to cut her hair and dye it like No, Anna. I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I'm going to do it while you're asleep. No, you're not. So what would you rate Bubble? Five stars. It was perfect. I, I got to go with five stars. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah, it was great. It was really, really good. Um, Van was kind of annoying, but the rest was great. I felt bad for him, but we won't spoil that. I, I, I didn't. I did. I didn't. I just didn't like him at all. All right. So let's go ahead and get into game and stuff. So for this week's games, we have Kirby Planet Robobot. Games? This week's There was game. more than one game? Game, game. Oh. Game. This, did I say games? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I haven't done this in, in a while. So. Yeah, we don't know what we're doing anymore. Yeah, it's been, it's been almost a month Zelda. and a half. Too much Zelda. I loved it. All mm. right, so Kirby Planet Robobot is an action platformer game developed by HAL Laboratories from Smash Bros. And published by Nintendo on June 10th. 2016. The game you take control of Kirby as he defends planet Popstar from an alien corporation known as Hulkman Works Company that wishes to mechanize the planet so that they can plunder its natural resources. So it, it, it I really like that um, how laboratories um, even though they they're kind of responsible for Smash Bros. now um, they still go back and do Kirby games and they still they, they still go back to their roots, even though they've gotten really big as a company. Um, all right, so the graphics. Let's go into the graphics. The graphics are super colorful. Um, they have very cutesy enemy designs to the point where I kind of feel bad every time I have to kill an enemy or inhale it and swallow it and get their powers. Yeah, I felt like I was doing something wrong because I actually played like 10 minutes of this game. Isn't it cute? Yeah. Did you ever swallow one of the animal, the, the yeah. monsters and take their powers? Yeah. Don't you just feel terrible afterwards? Yeah, because they're cute. I know, but they're trying to kill Everything's you. Everything's cute. Yeah, the little bitches with the spike log thing. What the fuck? Oh, right. Yeah, they... they... I thought I was going to pop. It, right? Because doesn't Kirby look kind of like a balloon, a balloon. or a mm-hmm. marshmallow? Mm-hmm. 
So I really like that the game has this kind of animation that uh, it, it's very bouncy and it's very, very yes. unique to all the Kirby games. They all feel like that Kirby has that little bounciness, um, which doesn't help whenever you swallow an enemy and you spit it out and you see him bouncing across the room. It makes you feel extra bad. Yep, but basically. That's what it is. Uh, the sound design in the game is exactly what you'd expect from a Kirby game. It has the sir- signature Kirby suck-up sound, which I would like to imitate, but I I don't know how to do that noise. And you would hear a lot of, uh, what's it called, vocal fry on the microphone? Vocal fry. Yeah, I Googled it. I know what it is now. There's a line in um, Bubble where they say Oh, but I nowadays. said that to you. Yeah, they I didn't get it. Yeah. Too much vocal, vocal fry. Uh-huh. It's what's that? Basically, when your voice sounds very... Uh, bass heavy and it reverberates well while you're talking oh don't try to do it it. don't try to do it i wasn't trying but i was like wait i probably sound like i'm trying to do it yeah your your voice sounds very asmr while you're talking oh my god i hate it when they sound like that (laughs) uh so yeah so so uh when you hit enemies they sound very weighty you know like there's actually like feels like there's some weight behind the damage you give them which again makes you feel bad uh the music is very curvy with tons of playful childlike tracks two large stakes powerful music whenever you're confronting an important boss so if you've played any recent kirby you kind of more or less know what you're getting into it's real cute it's really cute um I felt happy while I was playing it, even though I felt bad and for our old president, sucking people up. Our old president dances really well to the Kirby song in that one video. What? Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the gameplay, this game is definitely Kirby at its finest. Uh, you can run, jump, and float uh, and platform through Planet Popstar, inhaling and swallowing enemies, copying their abilities, and collecting data cubes to access bonus stages. So... In the world, since it's being invaded by a giant five-legged robot, um, each leg kind of represents a hub world where you can actually go where the stages are. And each hub world is completely different. So you must clear the stages in each hub world, which would make the legs blow up so that they would stop terraforming the, the area they're in. So you would go, let's say at the beginning, you always start in like kind of a meadow. So you see that the meadow is kind of being turned into like uh, industrial. So you would see like tree branches are actually pipes. Um, so the same thing in the desert area and the snow area. So I think that's that's really pretty cool because each stage kind of has like that own difference. But it's because it's set in each different part of Planet Popstar. Now, I do love that this game has something unique that has never done be- been done before in a Kirby game. And that's the mecha suit. It's a robot suit that Kirby can pilot and has a scan ability so that you can copy some enemy abilities to help you fight or solve puzzles. I think I encountered that, like, once. The the robot suit? I think so, because I know it popped up and said something about copying abilities. Yeah. So, you know, it also... Uh, well, you don't know, but it also <laughs> changes uh, into a race car for some certain stages or a fighter jet for some shooter-style stages. Uh, this is something that's new to the Kirby series, and I am going to be very disappointed if they don't bring this back in an eventual game, because I feel like this took the Kirby formula and elevated it more to what it could be. Um, so in this game, you'll probably hit all the regular Kirby beats. Uh, you will fight Meta Knight, you'll fight Wispy Wood, you'll unlock extra content after the game is finished. Um, and out of the box, the game comes with three modes. You got your regular story mode, which is your basic mode where you collect stuff, fight enemies, you know, go through the story. Then there's the Kirby 3D Rumble, which is a 3D arena based mode where you fight enemies and try to rack up points as quickly as possible with Kirby. It has a few extra tiers that I haven't unlocked since I just tested out the mode. Didn't really play it. But then there's also Team Kirby Clash which is a mode in which you and some friends can join forces to take out, take down some of the enemies in the game. Sort of an adventure mode. It looks like a lot of fun, and I think we should probably play this someday because I think this would be fun to play together. Kind of like a Smash bro thingy, but with uh, Kirby. Smash bro thingy. Yes. <laughs> but with Kirby. E-E-E. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be great. After you beat the main story, you do unlock the Meta Nightmare Returns which is basically the same game story, 
Instead, you're using Meta Knight, which is Kirby's uh, long, lifelong rival. It's just blue Kirby with a metal mask, wings, and a sword. Uh, so it's kind of like a time attack type deal. It's a little bit harder than the main campaign, and it, it it's fun. It adds a little bit to the story, but you're basically just replaying the same story over again, but with Meta Knight, which it's fun. It's just a little bit different. Uh, the last thing you unlock is the arena, which basically is just a bus rush, bus rush mode where you get to pick the ability you want to come into a fight. It's fun, but it just ends up feeling like basic extra fluff to make you play the game longer. Um, I do, however, like that the game has 25 different abilities that you can use as regular Kirby. Um, they range from everything from your regular sword to a cowboy with a whip to an archer, a ninja, a uh, fucking parasol, a doctor, a, a, nu a nuclear sludge waste. So it has... It has variety. Yeah, that you can use and it makes the game, you know, different. And I, I do like that um depending on which ability you have, there are certain puzzles that you can only solve with those abilities. Um for example, there's one with the robot where you have to suck up uh, an electrical enemy to use that electricity to open doors so that you can get some data cubes so that you can complete your collection. So if for some reason you missed that electric enemy earlier on in the stage, when you get to the puzzle, you got to start the stage over again because you're not going to be able to do it. So uh, it's a little bit annoying, but the stages aren't really that long and the game stays fun. They're pretty short, or at least the one I did was short. They, they kind of stay that length. They don't really go past five minutes. So um, I do have one problem with the game. What? It's very easy. It is very easy. I think. Well, I struggled with that boss, but, you know, I'm not a gamer, so... Yeah. Mm. I heard it killing you over and over again. <laughs> so, I know that Kirby is a franchise meant for little kids, um, but I do wish that it kind of had a little bit of a harder mode from the start. Or, which it would be actually much work for the game to scale with you as you progress through the story. But, as it stands, it's very... Very easy. But it's so cute, and it's easy for people like me. I didn't need you to tell me what to do. Like, I was able to figure it out, and it told me which controls to press. <laughs> that's press good. the down button to get through the slats and the wood bridge. Yeah. And, and that's good, um, because... And then I remembered. It's, it's not a hard game. Yeah. Um, and the way that they explain it, they tell you, you got to do this so that you can get this result. And they just tell you once. They don't keep hammering it into you over and over again. So I, I, it, it's super simple. It's super easy. But it does it's have its charms where a 31-year-old man like myself can pick it up and have fun. Yes. A child's game. Yes. A, that, that's good for ages 7 and up. <laughs> it's simple. Like, like your me, brain. Like me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So the the praise is the game is an evolution of the Kirby formula, plain and simple. Uh, it keeps what has always worked for Kirby, refining it to a point where it's just fun to play, and it builds on a base on on that established base by adding new mechanics like the Mecha Suit. Personally, I love the three data block collecting per stage, since it unlocks new stages that are not as easy as the regular stages. They are a bit harder. But not to the point where you get mad, you know, and they're, they're just a little bit more challenging than your regular stage. And they do kind of encompass all of the challenges that you were encountered throughout these hub worlds into one single stage. So, for example, there's in one of the later state hub worlds, there's one stage where you're dealing with fans blowing poison around. Then in the next stage, you're dealing with lasers coming up and down from the floor in the special stage. The whole stage would include the fans, the lasers, plus everything else that you would have had encountered in that world. And it, it just it just feels like a challenging reward for going out of your way to collect all these data blocks. So I, I also do like that there are little wonderful stickers that you can collect uh, throughout the game. And these stickers are characters or moments throughout the Kirby history. So you will see... The original Game Boy Kirby, which That's is adorable, which is black and white, 
floating in the air and that's it mm -hmm. looks super cute and then there's also some that will look exactly like they do in the game or some that will look in sprite form so it's it's just cute it's plain fucking cute it's, it's great <laughs> overall this game is a ton of fun and it's a great loss for uh, for the pink puff ball on 3ds it surpasses its predecessor triple deluxe in every way and to this point I feel like it's the best Kirby experience available, even though there's a Kirby Switch game. I mean, I'm not um, one to speak on this matter, but it was really fun. And I would have kept playing it if I hadn't felt the overwhelming urge to take a nap. Because it was cute. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it. See, the thing is, I, I did get you triple deluxe when I got you the 3DS. And I know we played through the game together. Uh, we didn't finish the entire game together. I did on my own. And at points, I felt like Overachiever. That, I felt like that game was not necessarily lacking, but it didn't feel like it was as good as it should have felt. And when I popped in Planet Robobot on the 3DS for the first time, I was like, wow. This is what it should have been. This feels like an upgrade. This is an improvement. That's this awesome. I really, really like. So It was fun. Um, it, while it does feel super easy and while i do feel like the game is extremely short especially compared to triple deluxe which is massive for some fucking reason um this game is just a 4.5 it's a great kirby game it's a good platformer if you have a little kid and you have a 3ds lying around which they are worth money now um don't give it to your little kid but play it yourself <laughs> but yeah um it's, it's a really good game i really really enjoyed it Hope, Nintendo, that if you're listening to this and HAL Laboratories, that your next Kirby game brings back the mecha suit in some way because I loved that mechanic. Can you imagine us ever getting to the point where Nintendo listens to our podcast? They, they, they don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> no, um, they had this program um, where they would actually get content creators and give them like, you know, hey, my, we have this game coming out mm -hmm. in a couple of months. We're going to give it to you a couple of months early so you can play it, review it, whatever. Mm -hmm. They don't do that anymore. No? No, they got to the point where, like, we're not working with anybody. If you don't... They don't need it. No. I mean, no, they really they don't. don't. They're, when the Wii U came out, it was <laughs> a massive failure. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just... It was terrible for, for Nintendo. Um, somebody leaked that Nintendo had enough money to create seven more Wii U's and they would still be alive. They would not go bankrupt. Wow. Seven more generations of failures. That's crazy. And they would have still enough, much more money to continue making games and shit. Damn. So, Nintendo doesn't need anybody. They're, they're, <laughs> they could just... Fuck y'all, bitches. They could Do just what we segregate want. themselves from Japan and be just another... Country. <laughs> superpower money machine. The land of Nintendo. <laughs> I would live there. I would live there happily. I would drive my go-kart to work, and you'd throw a banana out in front of me trying to kill me. <laughs> oh. Last week, we agreed that we're in a domestic partnership for You're so full the of benefits. shit. So killing you right now wouldn't reap any benefits for me. It would just affect both of us. Mm -hmm. So let, are you ready to go into our favorite segment? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, that's give me the garbage. restaurant is an East Orlando food truck, El Sandwichon. They also have the a what? Hey, shut up! What I is wanna, it? El, wanna, El Sandwichon. No, no, you said it right. I just want to hear you say it again. I, I, El Sandwichon. What? El Sandwichon. El Sandwichon. El Sandwichon. There you go. I had to say it in my way that I always say it. You know, It was, and, it was cute. It, it's it, my, it, it's my garbage cute. intro way. This that, week's restaurant is blah blah in blah blah. Or yeah, whatever. So this week's is... <laughs> What and where? It's an East Orlando food truck. El Sandwichon. <laughs> there we go. El so they also have locations in Claremont and in Puerto Rico. Yes, I'm not 100% sure about the Puerto Rico one, but I do know they have one in Claremont and one in... <laughs> then why did you tell me there's one in Puerto Rico? 
Because on the side of the truck, it says from Ponce, Puerto Rico. And I think I've seen updates on Facebook of them saying, oh, we got this now oh, in the Ponce location okay. or something like that. Okay. I, I might also be confused because I do follow a couple of food trucks from Puerto oh, Rico. Lord. <laughs> okay, so we think there might be one in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay, but there's definitely one in Claremont. Cool. Okay, so <laughs> I had the steak and pastrami sandwich, a.k.a. the bistrami. Yeah? Bistrami, yeah. El bistrami. <laughs> what? Shut up. Okay? I say that leave, again. No, leave me alone. Tropical chicken. I got to be honest. <laughs> got to be honest and tell you I was a little bit apprehensive about this place. I knew Chris had it before and raved about it. He even like made a post about it on our Instagram. All by myself. Yeah. All like, by himself. I took the pictures and I took a picture of the sandwich. I actually did have. He a uploaded it and everything without even telling me he did it. <laughs> and I said. The unofficial traditional Puerto Rican sandwich is the tripleta. Oh, no, I, I didn't. He didn't do it totally without me because I had to proofread it for him. Yeah, because I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so I knew he raved about it, but I know he also really likes some meat-heavy, greasy sandwiches. And I can't say that's really my thing. But this sandwich was so tasty. The steak is chipped into little... Um, don't, don't laugh at me. They're almost like little chocolate chip pieces. Yeah, they're, they're very <laughs> they're tiny. They're teeny tiny they're little, very, very tiny. like, dog food pieces. Oh, God. Was I eating dog food? No. <laughs> no. The thing is that they, they have beef steak, which I think the bistrami is beef steak. It's not steak. Um, and they also do uh, pastrami, which they also cut up really tiny. But I know they also do have the steak steak one which is churraco which is i see real and they cut it that small too okay but i mean it, it makes it so you don't have to tear it like i think about eating the cheese steaks that you make and having to tear it because the strips of meat like if you bite down into the middle of one you got to break it off you know yeah. or you take a whole chunk with you and then you're making a mess yeah it's already a mess <laughs> yep. um but these sandwiches are topped with mayo ketchup lettuce tomato potato sticks which i never knew was a thing before I, meeting I added, you i added the potato oh, sticks God. extra and swiss cheese yeah um they also put pickles in it but i asked for no pickles cuz they're last huge time, apparently yeah they're they're like hor horizontally sliced and the thing is that because they're horizontally sliced they release a lot of the pickle juice so it just soaks up the tastes bread tastes like a pickle sandwich yeah yeah um tastes like what we're going to review next week no, because what we're going <laughs> to review next week is actually delicious. It's meant um, to be pickly. Yeah, it's meant to be pickly. Um, but um, it, it just goes to show that the way that you slice whatever you're eating is important. Yeah. Because if they would do... Um, like a wedge. Like a wedge or a crinkle, it would it would be great. Or just fucking slice it in vertically. But horizontally, that that uh, that's not a good slice on anything, <laughs> except tomatoes because tomatoes are always round. <laughs> but I, I thought it was really tasty. I'm a big fan of a hot sandwich. I don't like cold sandwiches. I don't like Jimmy John's because of this. <laughs> I love Jimmy John's, and I I really enjoyed this. I mean, it was packed with flavor. Those meats were uh, the steak was seasoned really well. Um, I feel like the mayo ketchup is a really good. I don't want to say binder. I don't know. It, it completes it. It yes. complements the whole thing. Yes. Um, I, I am going to so say it's so hot they, and tasty. They do have the the, the typical Puerto Rican bread, um, el pan de agua, which that is real Puerto Rican bread, not what they sell at Walmart. What they sell at Walmart is Cuban bread. It's not Puerto Rican bread. I thought uh, it was very different. So that that bread, el pan de agua, it's made so that the inside is very fluffy and cloudy, and the outside is just crunch. Which I appreciated. So it's not like a sourdough where everything is crunch. Yeah. But it. So n now you understand. Yeah, now, I understand. Now you get it. Um, it's tasty. It but just, Jesus Christ, they make some big fucking sandwiches. His sandwich was literally the size of his forearm. It was bigger than my bigger forearm. Bigger than, longer than his forearm. It was almost the length of his entire arm. So I, I had what they call el sandwichong, which is their. Um, I'm, Steak, I'm guessing pastrami, their signature, ham, and smoked ham. Their signature uh, sandwich. It also has mortadella in it, 
which is a, it's an Italian uh, cured meat, kind of oh. like salami. Pepperoni. No, they, they have different ones. Mm. I, I really like mortadella. For some reason, it's not big over here, but it is in Puerto Rico. You can go to the, any bakery and say, I want a mortadella sandwich with queso de papa, which is cheddar cheese. Queso de papa? Yeah. Call it potato cheese in English, but mm. it's cheddar cheese. Papa. Um, And they just make... God, we're going to eat so much shit when we go to Puerto Rico. We ain't going to Puerto Rico then. No. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so this sandwich is massive bigger than my forearm i mean mine was a regular one and it was still like i could only eat half of it it was huge huge it's it's packed with meat and it's so good now the one that i did have last time uh was the regular tripleta uh that regular tripleta it had uh let me see here it's three different kinds of meat uh, it's supposed to be pork, beef, and chicken. That's what you would get in a regular tripleta. You put on, you put chicken on it. That's how it's supposed to be. Really? Yes. Um, but for them, the way that they do it is beef steak, uh, thin sliced steak, ham, and that that's pretty much it. It's technically three proteins, but it's supposed to be three different mm-hmm. proteins. Um, either way. It's fantastic. It's one of the best tripletas I've ever had. Um, they do have a competition down the road called La Isla del Frappe, which also does really good tripleta, but they are fucking expensive. And they have some really good frappes, but we've literally only been once because it was so expensive. I think you spent like $50 yeah. on two drinks and two sandwiches. Yep. It was insane. Yeah, and... and at San Chong, I spent $32, but it's because my sandwich was 15 and yours was 10. But with my sandwich, you could feed three people. You really could. Granted, he ate all of it. I ate all of it. <laughs> it was so good, I just ate this all of it. This is why we're going on a diet, folks. <laughs> because he ate a sandwich for three people. <laughs> I couldn't control myself. It was so good. I, I, I really didn't think there was any way he could eat the whole thing. The thing is I just I, knew we were going to have lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> Not lunch and dinner. <laughs> like, I was sitting there, we were watching TV, and I'm like, I kind of want to eat the rest of the sandwich. And I ate it, and the thing is, I felt perfectly fine after eating it. You went and got dinner, and I was like, oh, I am, I fucked not, up. <laughs> I am not ready for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, San Wei Chong, definitely garbage. If you're local, uh, plan on waiting for a hot minute. It took us half an hour. To get our sandwiches. They don't have anything made. They I know. They don't have anything pre-made. I know, it's but there was fresh. only one person in he- ahead of us. One. No, he ordered at the same time. So when he got up there, um, our food was being wrapped up. Jeez Louise. So when he got there, they were about to ring our number. I mean, it's nice that it's so. freshly made, but Lord have mercy. So toasty, so good, so... Mm. Mm-hmm. More... You... Americans. Oh, need, hey. Need to add more mortadella to your uh, food. You know, technically you're American too. You, you didn't white marry people. me for a green card. You chefs. You know, you have white people in Puerto Rico too, who are actually Puerto Rican. You know, like half of your family is white, right? My cousin's ginger. Your aunt is very white. She's as white as me. <laughs> she has compared our time out in the sun to each other because we're of the same color. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. Uh, yeah, I, I just wish that more people would add more tallia to their to their menus because it's it's good. It's really good. I'm sorry. Um, until then, I'll keep eating a sandwich. Home. Maybe next time I'll just buy one and we can share it. I'll yeah. tell them slice it in half instead of in three quarters. I'll only eat that one piece that you left there. Well, that you didn't leave, but that you like chose to eat at the very end. That's all I would take away from it. Yeah. Yep. You didn't try it, did you? No. No. I didn't try their, I didn't try yours either, which it was good. We have half a sandwich that we can try tomorrow together. I can take a bite out of it. That's you can. It. Uh, but yeah, again, we can split in half, and I'd still be fine, probably. Maybe I won't. <laughs> so yeah, again, garbage. This this place is amazing. Yeah, it was really um, tasty. And apart from that, they also do have extra things. They have uh, 
em- cones. Empanadilla? They have empanadillas, which are turn- stuffed turnovers. I um, thought that was intriguing. Yeah, they have shrimp, lobster, uh, beef, chicken. They have quesito? They have quesitos, which are the stuffed puff pastries with cheese. And I think theirs have s- strawberry or guayaba. It's guava. like guava. Yeah. They have and the lom- lom- lomber thing. What? The thing that you were talking about. The cold. Limber. Limber. Yeah, so limber is Not basically lumber. a cup. <laughs> <laughs> lumber. A cup full of lumber. Uh, <laughs> I mean, really? I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want cherry or do you want pine? Redwood. <laughs> <laughs> Redwood. <laughs> That's $5 extra. <laughs> oh, um, God. But yeah, no, limber is like... Um, I'm, I don't want to say a sorbet or anything because it's basically just frozen juice. I guess it's kind of like Italian ice, sort of. No, ish, not really. Not no. no, 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 no. Um, it's like a popsicle, but in a cup. Yeah, and it's solid as a rock. You can kill somebody with it if you try it hard <laughs> enough. Um, um, and they, they also have the cones stuffed with seafood. They have octopus and conch. Yeah, and I thought it was conch, pretty conch, random. Conch? Conch? I don't. Shrimp, I never know. I can't eat any of that, but... You can they, eat octopus. I can eat octopus. I love octopus. Ugh. But, you know, there's there's options if you don't want to have a, a super meaty, delicious sandwich. You can have fishy. Yeah. Tentacly. They do have fish sandwiches. They did have one called Maritierra. It's um, it's uh Sounds like your steak. grandma's name. Maritere. <laughs> That's different. I know. Uh, the, Maritierra, it's steak and seafood. Um, I think it's... Uh, Churrasco with shrimp and lobster. So I don't know. You know. Not for me, but yeah, you have options. You have way more than enough options if you go there and eat, which you should because it is delicious. Tasty. Oh, God. So, ready to get into some housekeeping? I am ready. I don't know how I'm going to read this because I am struggling. Okay, so housekeeping. Uh, go sign up for our Patreon because we are funny. More uh, patrons, more giveaways. More that's patrons, true. more giveaways. Uh, the more patrons, Uber stories. The more uh, people we get on Patreon, uh, the more giveaways we can do more often. Last week we gave away two copies of Hades. Uh, one of the winners actually won an extra twenty-five dollar gift card for Barnes and Noble and a twenty-five dollar gift card to use at any of the places that we've reviewed on the podcast to eat. So we're watching. So we are, um, we are good to subscribe to on Patreon because of that. (laughs) Not only that, but you also get to vote in our polls and all that shit so that you can decide where the future of the show is going as we make these episodes up on the spot because we take like five minutes to actually write out the episode and that's why we have so many errors. Apart from all that, remember to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at A Novel Console and on Facebook.com at Facebook.com slash A Novel Console. Don't forget to tell your friends that they can find the show on most major podcast streaming platforms and that they can also listen on youtube by searching for a novel console don't forget to tell them to subscribe like and comment which we would really like if they did um that's actually something that's really cool because we get to see all those stats and we get to see how they influence the show and all that which is great um you can also leave a review on apple Podcasts and google Podcasts so that more people can find us and i i've kept forgetting to say this but uh, a couple of weeks ago i got a notification saying that we are 76 in <laughs> comedy in comedy in the philippines in the philippines which is kind of wild but wow i think about people like rose listening to us that's what my aunt said um, really and then <laughs> in video games we were 65 in the philippines in the philippines look at us so it would be awesome if we could Moving do that in America. Moving on up in the Philippines. <laughs> if we could do this in America, that would be great. That so was tell our your goal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, also, like Burger Champ has been doing this whole time, which we Thank love. you, Burger Champ. We just love it so much. Every time we get an email, we're like, oh, this is good content for the show. You can also email us at anobleconsole at gmail.com, and we will read your email on the show. Unless you ask us not to. Exactly. Um, and if you, anything has caught your attention during the show, anything at all, and you want to give us feedback or information or tell us what crazy book and game you would cross over, 
Try or your email. ideal uh, combo. Exactly, that too. I had a coworker uh, called Sultan that he told me his, and I think it was a was it a cheesesteak from? I think it was a cheesesteak from uh, Jersey Mike's, and then he would go to Checkers, get fries, and put the Checkers fries inside the cheesesteak, and it was really good. Apparently, I need to make I need to make a a, a change to mine. What? I'm gonna replace the Satan fries with Culver's fries with a big old container of cheese sauce. I will allow that. Okay. I would also. What was my allow- other side? <laughs> I don't remember. Most queso. Oh yeah, most queso. Yeah, so well, all the cheese. All, oh my god! Do you realize how cheese heavy my meal is? I got a cheese quesadilla. I got fries with cheese sauce. I got queso. What was my dessert? <laughs> Cheesecake. <laughs> What? No, seriously, what was my dessert? Oh, the cappuccino crunch, not yeah, cheesy. Yeah. yeah, I love cheese a lot. Oh, man, your body's not going to know what to do with all that coffee yeah. and cheese. I'm not going to be able to shit. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and remember, our art was done by Metamorphic A on Instagram. You can give her a follow. Her thing is on the show notes, so go there. <laughs> and uh, with that, we end this week's episode. I thought we were going to run under because I really didn't have much to say about Kirby. I didn't have much to say about Bubble, and look at us. Yep, there we go. An hour and almost 10 minutes. So, you want to say goodbye to everyone, Keridan? Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.